Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today I want to talk about Big Screen Beyond. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little story to give you some context. It's been almost a year since the CEO of Big Screen, Darshan Shankar, visited me at my studio to show me something exciting the Big Screen team had been working on. It turned out to be this brand new, impossibly small Steam VR headset, unashamedly designed for the hardcore VR enthusiast called Big Screen Beyond. When I first held this headset in my hands, it felt like I had jumped forward in time, as it was just so far ahead of everything else available on the market with this tiny form factor. However, as I put this hand-built prototype headset on with Darshan eagerly watching, I wasn't actually initially blown away. A stark contrast to all the other first reactions I've seen since. I just couldn't get used to the comfort. There was noticeable distortion in VR games. The lenses had glue in them, making the visuals kind of blurry, and my index controllers kept losing tracking due to the location of the Bluetooth antenna. But over the following months, I, along with a few others, worked with Darshan testing and providing critical feedback on a few different prototype models, each with noticeable improvements over the last. I should stress that I wasn't paid for any of this testing and I did it as I wanted to help and I believed in Darshan's vision. And here we are now rapidly approaching the first pre-orders being shipped out to customers. I have here the final prototype prior to the consumer version and I'm pleased to report that all the issues I had during my testing have since been resolved along with some unexpected major improvements. But with that said, there are a couple of things that I would love to see improved further. So in this video, I'll be sharing my impressions on two important factors of the big screen beyond, comfort and visuals. I'll also be sharing some tips I've learned along the way and I'll round up the video giving you my conclusion on who I think this headset is best suited for. So I wanna start off getting straight into the visuals as I think this is probably the reason why most people would consider buying one. The Big Screen Beyond is one of the first consumer VR headsets to feature micro OLED displays. These displays provide a high resolution of 2560 by 2560 pixels per eye, running at 75 or 90 hertz. The refresh rate mode can be changed by using a simple application provided by Big Screen, but hopefully this setting will be integrated directly into Steam VR in the future. I should stress that this is the only external big screen application you might want to use. It's not like some other VR headsets where you need to run proprietary software alongside Steam VR for it to work. The Big Screen Beyond is a native Steam VR headset. One thing to mention is that when you run the Beyond at 75 Hertz, you get the full resolution of the panel. But when switching to 90 Hertz, the resolution is actually dropped to 1920 by 1920 pixels per eye, and then upscaled on the headset to 2560 by 2560. You get a slight reduction in sharpness at 90 Hertz when compared to 75 Hertz due to the upscaling. So 75 Hertz might be better for use cases where that extra sharpness really matters like reading text or watching movies, for example. For me, 90 Hertz was perfectly fine when using the Beyond for all my VR gaming. Being micro OLED, these displays in Beyond offer incredible contrast. This means that shadows and dark areas in games look deep black instead of the dull gray you get sometimes in LCD equipped headsets. Also, due to the incredibly pixel dense displays, which are only about an inch in size, screen door effect is a thing of the past. I found when playing some of my favorite VR games, I had these moments of clarity where everything looked and felt more immersive in Beyond than any other VR headset I've tried. Half-Life Alex is breathtaking in Beyond, and even though I've completed the game twice, I found myself noticing small details I'd never seen before when using this headset. And some other VR games become genuinely scarier in Beyond, as you really can't see what's lurking in the shadows with a headset like this. This was perfectly highlighted whilst playing Propagation Paradise Hotel in Beyond, which, despite being a short game, is well worth checking out if you're looking for something run, fun to play. Run, 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 run. Sitting in front of these micro OLED displays are custom pancake lenses. These lenses are clear, so you don't see concentric rings in them like you do with Fresnel lenses. The combination of the micro OLED displays and these pancake lenses provides a sharp and vibrant image in VR that's really hard to appreciate without seeing it for yourself. One of the issues with Beyond having this tiny form factor and the custom face cushion, it means that wearing glasses in this headset just isn't possible. 
However, to address this, big screen will be selling these tiny prescription lens inserts. They're simply held in place using two tiny magnets. It's a nice solution and a way better option over diopters, which I saw in the Vive XR Elite. And even though I have a mild corrective prescription, I found it made a big difference on how everything looked inside the headset. So two thumbs up there. Initially, when I started testing Beyond, the field of view was around 93 degrees horizontally. And since then, big screen have under-promised and over-delivered by actually increasing the field of view to around 102 degrees horizontally. In my testing, this means that it's actually now slightly bigger than the horizontal field of view found in the Quest 2. A huge improvement in my mind. However, despite all of this praise, there are two issues with the lenses in particular that I have to address. The first is glare, and this really becomes apparent in contrasting scenes, like when you get white text or white logos on a black background. It isn't so much of a problem when you're playing VR games, but whilst watching a movie in VR using big screen, it actually became so distracting that halfway through the film, I had to switch over to watch the rest of it on my TV instead. This is really unfortunate, especially as this is the use case Beyond was primarily designed for. The second is the sweet spot. You see, this headset is tiny, which means the lenses are tiny, which in turn means the sweet spot is also tiny. When putting the headset on for the first time to jump into VR, it always takes me a little while to get it perfectly lined up. The problem is if you slightly move the headset, you're then knocked out of that sweet spot range. And then once you're out of that range, that's when the quality of the image drops off significantly. It could be that both of these issues are slightly improved with the final consumer version, so I'll pin a comment below with my updated thoughts once I get my hands on one. Of course, to run a headset like Beyond, you're going to need a powerful gaming PC. And that's where Asus, Republic of Gamers, the sponsor of this video, comes in. Big Screen recommend a PC equipped with a minimum of an RTX 2070. So when ROG approached me to check out their brand new G22 small form factor gaming PC, I couldn't think of a more perfect pairing. The world's smallest VR headset meets one of the smallest gaming desktops available on the market. Just like Beyond, this PC is tiny and packed full of tech. It comes with Windows 11 pre-installed. It has a water-cooled Intel i9-13900KF processor, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, a one terabyte M.2 SSD drive, and an RTX 4070. All of this is packed neatly into a super compact 10 liter chassis. All of the VR gameplay footage I recorded for this video was captured directly from this PC. And I have to say it handled every VR game I threw at it like an absolute champ. The great thing about the G22 is that it really wouldn't look out of place in an office, in a bedroom setup, or even under the TV in the living room. So if you're looking for a brand new powerful gaming PC that's super compact and can handle even high-end VR headsets like the big screen beyond, check out the Republic of Gamers G22 using the link in the description below. So moving back to the beyond and on to comfort and one of the most unique features that really sets this headset apart from the crowd and that's the custom face cushion. Everyone that orders a Beyond will be asked to provide a 3D face scan to provide an accurate IPD measurement and so Big Screen can create a custom face cushion for each customer. These cushions are designed to create the perfect seal on your face, blocking out any external light and maximizing comfort. The cushion is actually 3D printed from a rubbery material which makes them really soft and squishy and it has this hard plastic support structure at the back where the magnets that hold it in place are located. Now, I have to be honest, it actually took me a while to get used to the way the Beyond feels on my face. I initially described this feeling as kind of intrusive, as I was so used to other VR headsets where you only get the edge of the facial interface touching your face, whereas with Beyond, it actually kind of feels like it's directly hugging your eyeballs. Ideally, if you order a Beyond, you'll get a perfect fitting face cushion that's comfortable and you can wear it for hours straight out of the box. But if you're an edge case like me, finding that comfort sweet spot might take a little bit of work. After testing around five different face cushions, I ended up actually cutting some of the material out of one of the cushions I had to make it more accommodating for my nose. I do appreciate though that if you're spending this much money on a custom VR headset, you probably don't want to be cutting into the face cushion yourself. So just be aware, there might be a bit of trial and error to get the fit perfectly right, but I've been assured by the big screen team that they're committed to working with these edge case customers like me until they're satisfied. 
A couple of limitations of this custom fit approach are firstly, an iPhone XR or higher is required for the initial 3D face scan as it uses the LiDAR sensor on the iPhone. So there's no support right now for Android users. If you don't have access to an iPhone, big screen kind of suggests borrowing one from a friend or maybe even going into an Apple store and using one there. But just being locked to iPhone alone does cause issues for a few people. And secondly, because the face cushion and headset come shipped preset to your face and your IPD measurement, it's not an ideal headset for those that want to share it with friends and family. So a couple of points there to bear in mind. And finally, before moving on to my conclusion, I briefly want to talk about the soft head strap. Now, I appreciate from an aesthetics point of view, a single strap looks much cleaner in images and promotional trailers. I mean, even Apple have gone down this single strap route in their initial marketing. But in reality, a single strap is just not enough support, even with an insanely light headset like the Beyond, which mine only comes in at around 195 grams in total. I did experiment with a few different top straps during my testing, and I ended up settling on this one from VR Cover. With this installed, it really helps to distribute the strap support much better on my head, and it also helps to raise the soft strap away from my ears. There will be an optional $99 rigid audio strap available from Big Screen, but I haven't had the opportunity to test this out yet. Also, I want to say my buddy Sadly It's Bradley is currently working on a cool flip up design. So if you're interested in that, I'll add a link to his live stream where he talks about it in more detail in the description down below. I should also quickly mention that no audio solution is built into the Beyond, so you do have to provide your own. I'm normally a big advocate of over ear headphones for VR headsets, but due to the Beyond being so light, as soon as you put headphones over the top of the head strap, it tends to shift the headset around, meaning that you'll need to readjust to get into that sweet spot position all over again. So personally, with the Beyond, I actually prefer to use these wireless Bluetooth earbuds. If you're interested, these are the Soundcore P10 earbuds from Anchor, which I use connected directly to my PC with this little included dongle that comes in the package. But now that I have my face cushion, my earbuds and head strap all dialed into my liking, the Big Screen Beyond is an incredibly comfortable headset. Far more comfortable than any other headset I own, and honestly I could use it for hours on end without any issues. So here's my final conclusion. What the Big Screen team have been able to achieve with Beyond is commendable. From my first initial demo to now, the headset has come on leaps and bounds. Unlike other VR companies trying to tackle multiple big problems all at once, Big Screen always had laser focus on two key areas, the comfort and the visuals. And I feel like for the most part, they've nailed it and have delivered on those areas. Since this last prototype, the Big Screen Beyond has become my go-to Steam VR headset of choice, and that's over the Quest 2, Quest Pro, and Index. And I would say overall, it's a much better experience than my time with both the Vario, Aero, and the Vive XR Elite. But at the price point of 999 US dollars, 1,149 British pounds, this isn't a headset for everyone. In my mind, the Beyond would ideally be suited to someone who's already deep in the Steam VR ecosystem. And by that, I mean someone who already owns base stations and index controllers. Because if you don't own them already, you'll need to buy them separately. So I think of this as a nice upgrade path for someone who already owns a Valve Index or an HTC Vive. If you happen to be a regular VR sim racer or VR sim flyer, or even a hardcore VR chat user that's looking for an upgrade, I would wholeheartedly recommend Big Screen Beyond. The reason why I wouldn't recommend this headset to everyone else is mainly due to something that's actually out of Big Screen's control. And that's the real lack of new high quality AAA VR games available on the Steam VR platform to really justify spending this much money on a new VR headset. So for the general VR gamer, personally I would say hold off, maybe wait a little bit longer, especially now as we're seeing more high quality VR gaming content being locked exclusively to other platforms, such as Quest and the PSVR 2. With all that aside though, this is a fantastic start from Big Screen, and I do hope Beyond is just the first step in a line of VR headsets to come from them in the future. So that's my thoughts on the big screen beyond. I tried to keep this video as brief as possible. So if there's anything that I missed and you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments down below and I'll do my very best to answer as many questions as I can. Also, big thanks to ROG Republic of Gamers for sponsoring this video. The G22 is genuinely an awesome bit of kit and I plan to use it in my VR recording workflow moving forward in the future. 
If you want to check out more information on the ROG G22 and of course the big screen beyond, I've added links to both in the description down below. Leave a cheeky little like if you enjoyed this video. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you all on the next one. <laughs> Cheers.